Welcome to My Security TV and our Tech and Sec Weekly. And today we're joined by Jeff Park, Australia's Country Manager with Seagate. And we're going to dive into the Skyhawk surveillance hard drives. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Good to be here. Jeff, uh, we're both in Sydney, so same time zones, but um, certainly going to dive into the Australian market and obviously the sort of video surveillance uh, sector as well. Maybe introduce us to uh, Seagate and then we'll dive into the, the Skyhawk uh, hard drives. Uh, it's an area close to my heart as a, uh, a video surveillance consultant as well. Yeah, certainly, Chris. Uh, I think the Seagates uh, are looking into the surveillance market from the storage perspective sort of started around a similar time as uh, my security media started right. about 13 years ago. Um, so back then, um, you know, we had a large inquiry from some system integrators about certain uh, applications, uh, particularly in the surveillance. So as you, we all know by now, um, the surveillance uh, requires a constant 24 hour, seven day video stream recorded into a small uh, NVR or um, uh, the units uh, with multiple channels streaming in and with a definition of the high video resolution keep going up, the hard drive uh, workload couldn't really cope so we re-engineered uh, our Seagate Hawk drive to really address all these uh, challenges in terms of the workload, uh, reliability, as well as the performance. Well, that's as you just highlighted there, it's a 24 hour sort of stream and recording requirement there. It becomes critical system really at the end of the day. If the hard drive falls over, it doesn't matter what the field of view is and what the camera is doing. Uh, if you don't have that sort of backup, and the other thing is the the uh, the rates of cameras have moved up to you know now the sort of multi megapixel cameras two fours and uh, sometimes up to fives as well. How how has that changed the surveillance sector? And we'll move in also into the video analytics of this as well. But just some of the, the sort of the key aspects of the Skyhawk and uh, also the health monitoring as well because and, and how these uh, the systems are set up uh, in terms of that storage. Sure, absolutely, Chris. I think first um, we had to really address uh, some of the industry concerns. The 3.5 inch, um, the hard drive has been the standard for many of applications besides just the desktops. Um, it's widely used in ATMs and copy machines and many of the digital uh, contents and our information get stored in that. Um, as you mentioned, Chris, the video surveillance is a completely different challenge for us. 24-7 um, um, recording of high resolution. So we really have to re-engineer our Skyhawk to ensure the workload rating actually do meet the standard uh, expectations. So in the Skyhawk ranges, you can expect to deliver up to 180 terabyte per year recording. Uh, on Skyhawk AI, it goes up to as high as 500 a terabyte per year, and that's equivalent to the enterprise drives that you see in the servers. Mm. So with the amount of the AI algorithm built into the surveillance these days, whether it's a face recognition or people counting or hit um, tracking, these surveillance are being smarter. Now for surveillance solutions to be smarter, the backbone of the storage also needs to catch up. Hence why we're constantly coming up with a new solution such as a Skyhawk AI uh, 18 terabyte we launched recently. Right. Um, we talk about the health monitoring portion as well, Chris. Um, it's, it, you know, engineering can do their best to come up with the best product solution for the customers, but we often find the usage application or the usage model varies from customers to customers. Um, I've seen customers put an NVI in a closed um, cabinet with no uh, airflow um, and, and it can heat up uh, or it can build up some humidity. So what we have introduced with our Skyhawk is Skyhawk Health Management. It's a, essentially uh, a tool that allows users to monitor the health of the entire system whether remotely or on site. So you can also prevent certain catastrophic failure before it happens to ensure the, the footage or the video captured are safely guarded. And is that something that is just automatic with the system? It's, uh, it just becomes not an option. Uh, there's no cost involved. And I suppose, how is it configured? Is it automatically configured as part of that sort of health management as you, as you call it? 
Yeah, so the health management is actually a standard with the Seagate Skyhawk uh, drives. It is uh, industry first and it's quite unique to Seagate Skyhawk. Uh, we have developed this health management with a number of vendors to ensure the system can detect the health uh, the parameters and also turn into a language that the users can comprehend. So it doesn't just give you numbers or the different code. It'll actually send you a certain alert to administrators. Um, you can set that up from their operating systems as you do for all the camera configuration. So it is very standard. It is built into the Skyhawk. Um, and a lot of the integrators are really uh, taking advantage of having to monitor the client systems uh, remotely. It's a, another value added service that you can provide to your customers. And is that done, I take it it's also done at the sort of the individual drive, but is it done as a collective how do you do that with, a, with the number of drives as well? You get a sort of an overview of the whole system or is that at a, only at the individual drive level? So the Seagate Skyhawk health management applies to all the Seagate Skyhawk drives. So whether you use a two drive configuration or you use more drives for to meet the higher retention period or more cameras, all drives in the system will show as a Skyhawk health management. It's a little icon that you will actually see that differentiate the drive is checking the health uh, system of the drive. Nice. And this obviously relates, I'll give my notes here, is uh, Seagate Rescue. So with that health monitoring, if you do get a, a bit of a breakdown or a, you know, you get a bad health check, so to speak, uh, what's the rescue? How does all that work? Okay, so obviously the Seagate Skyhawk is engineered to work 24-7 and meeting all the customer expectation. But unfortunately, uh, disasters happen, whether you know, it's a vandalism or it could be flooded. So, so Seagate Rescue Services essentially is a Seagate data recovery service provided by Seagate. Um, we have in-house labs worldwide and we use our own logistics to collect the drives. It's built embedded with the Seagate Skyhawk health management. So once the drives are uh, operating and it detects certain abnormality, the administrator will get a notification through the health management. But if a disaster happens and the drive needs the re rescue services, it's really a click of a button away to contact Seagate Rescue Services to get the data recovered on the Seagate Hawk drive. Nice. I think this does a, sort of highlights where storage is at. It's quite a sophisticated game now, particularly uh, with the Skyhawk AI. And let's just sort of dive a little bit deeper into AI and video analytics. What are some of the, the differences there with the Skyhawk AI? It's built specifically for sort of the, those machine learning and analytic components. Yeah, absolutely. I think, Chris, we uh, talked about the need to deliver the performance of capturing all the video streaming coming into the NVR, uh, whether it's a 12 camera or 24 cameras. Skyhawk drives are designed to uh, perform at that level. But when you're talking about putting algorithms to real to real time analytic of the data that captured or tracking people's movement or do a face recognition, you're asking drive to do analytical performance at the same time as writing all that intense data. Yep. So that's where the Skyhawk AI comes in, where the Skyhawk AI is capable of recording 64 high definition cameras, as well as doing up to 32 algorithms at the same time at the background. So Skyhawk AI is a very unique in a sense that it has more balance, but it has a much higher workload rating to really uh, deliver the performance uh, the user is expecting. So it, it's it's obviously doing both. It's recording, but then it's also allocating that space to retrieve that footage and analyze it, right? A absolutely, because quite often, let's say the NDI is connected to a data center somewhere at the back. You can't wait for that data decision to be made to stop the intruder or block the people coming in or uh, monitoring the traffic. Uh, the decision has to be made on the spot in real time. And often the network latency is not really designed yeah. to cope with that kind of uh, real time decision making. So hence the, the, the hard drive or the storage capability has to catch up at the edge where the actual ac action is happening. And what are those sort of key applications for machine learning and analytics that you're seeing, particularly say in the retail sector, or even, you know, we hear the term smart cities and for city surveillance, 
Uh, maybe just talk through what you're seeing with client sort of applications for um, analytics for video, some of the real benefits that you get out of uh, sort of re that real time analytics. Yeah, um, surveillance industry is really interesting. There's always uh, new applications coming in. Uh, I think in the last couple of years, we also seen uh, business taking this existing surveillance into a new level. So one of the area that I've seen in the retail sector is quite often the merchandisers of the retailers will really rely on the actual sales um, report to make a decision. But you have to realize that report was generated a couple of days ago, so you're not looking at real time. Mm. Uh, what the surveillance and AI and machine learning can help is link those heat uh, tracking of people movement, depends on the aisle time of the day, to really see if what they have presented in the store are linking with the cu uh, customer expectation because you can do a lot of object tracings and facial recognition to see if the people are picking up the goods but not taking it to the counter. Then there's a clearly a lack of business or a missed business opportunity. So a lot of merchandisers are trying to use this big data to make a more informed decision about placement, uh, inventory management. I imagine that's sort of different across different stores as well, even though it might be the same chain, they can start to pr to bring all that and see how each individual stores are operating. The other one was obviously we've heard um, some uh, in our previous uh, episodes is with uh, traffic monitoring, but also people counting for COVID monitoring in, in public spaces as well. In sort of the city environment, what are the type of the applications that you're seeing uh, being applied? Well, Definitely the traffic controls or the people counting is one of the very obvious things that we have seen uh, during the last pandemic. Um, it is still case, but the other application that we can also see is really, when you're talking about the smart city deploying all this surveillance, it does more than just um, uh, crime prevention. Um, it's all about the smart resources planning. Uh, you gotta think about how many, um, uh, officers to have patrolling around the stadiums uh, in what areas at what time and all these informations are coming through the surveillance um, so that people can make a smarter decision about using the limited resources and that application will continue to build um, uh, the data to evolve to make a smarter decisions. It's definitely been raised, video has been raised a number of times particularly in contact tracing for COVID, it's a real tool for what they're applying that for. One thing we maybe haven't covered it off is the hard drives are specifically built for surveillance because it's a 24 hour robust system, but Seagate has a range of different sort of areas of the hard drive business. How does, what's the key differences there for the, for the Skyhawks and how does that compare to the other range that Seagate has? Sure, so Skyhawk is uh, definitely our flagship product to address the uh, SMB surveillance needs, whether it goes to two bay NBR or single or four bay. Uh, we have, as mentioned, we talked about the Skyhawk AI, which has added on capability of doing the real time analytic algorithms while it's recording the video footage. Um, that's all good for the smaller scale, but when you're talking about, as you mentioned, bigger scale where you have uh, thousands of cameras or hundreds of cameras linked into a, a casino or airport or school or shopping malls, you need something even more robust. Uh, that's where our Seagate Exos range comes in, in a server. Um, so it can have a number of different applications, not just the surveillance video footage, but also a lot of other applications that the retailers will be using. And they, that's comparative to the Skyhawk. It's sort of built the same way, but as you say, it's either built for the data center or for the on-prem server. Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, Seagate Exos range has been in the industry standard for many, many years. Uh, we have a various of different interfaces and we tend to have the highest capacity available with the Exos as the uh, data centers uh, storage demand continues to grow uh, at a very fast rate. And if you think about it, these high capacity drives not just address your uh, storage need, but um, using higher capacity drives tend to be far more co cost efficient, not just at the deploy, but also at the maintenance as well, because the power consumption yeah. that you're gonna having with a um, 
larger capacity will be significantly less than having multiples of low capacity drives. We've also got that preventative maintenance aspect too with your health monitoring. I think that's real, a real factor uh, that sort of differentiates you in the market is that health monitoring for that preventative maintenance. So you don't get that downtime or you, you sort of increase the, uh, the chances of avoiding any downtime. So with, with that Exos range, the, I take it you can break down. So let's say you are dealing with a, a large system. You're not going to have all of your cameras sort of, uh, sort of situated there for, uh, to, let me just repeat that. You're not going to have all your cameras there deployed for video analytics. I think you can separate that off. So any cameras that are there positioned and are there purpose built for video analytics, you'd have them connected to those AI drives. And then the Absolutely. others can go on to standard drives and you can separate and uh, configure your system to suit, right? That's right. Very good. Yes. How, how would that work? Like, uh, is it as simple as just connecting and sort of um, allocating the IP address to that uh, and then sort of separating that off? Or does it come down to the video management system as well? It is actually all comes down to video management software that uh, the end user or the integrator will be using. But these video management softwares are so um, advanced these days that you can have a lot of uh, customization on your requirement. Some might be very sensitive about the uh, a night mode um, yeah. for the car parts, uh, which doesn't have a you know a lot of lights in. Um, some might be more focused on the facial recognition for the you know intruders. Um, if you're thinking about a school, um, you certainly don't want um, strangers to walk into the school, um, but you can't have can't afford to have a um, in a security guard in all the entrances. So the CCTVs um, can be really configured to uh, individual requirements. Well, I'd also imagine you'd, you'd switch that over, that storage over if uh, during times that you will be doing video analytics and then you switch it back over to a normal hard drive when you're just recording normal footage. So it's be quite a, allows a bit of thinking there to be done in the system design. So I think it's really a uh, fascinating area for me. Um, recently did some hospitals uh, and uh, some other sort of state infrastructure. Uh, it does get you thinking on how these systems are, uh, are, are configured, but also how they're going to be used operationally. And those that tool set of video analytics uh, and having that assurance in the system itself is uh, very, very important. It's critical, actually. How do we get in touch with Seagate? Where's the best place to start? And I take it you've got partners and distribution channels, but even as a consultant or as an end user, a small business operator or a large sort of security manager for a large enterprise, what's the best place uh, to get in touch and find out more? So uh, typically the best way to get in contact with the Seagate team locally will be through the website, uh, to seagate.com. Uh, not only we will uh, we'll publish all the latest information regarding product and services there, but you can also uh, drop a little memo, uh, make an inquiry, which will get directed to our team here, and we can address all your concerns. We have a number of SIs and wholesale partners and vendors that we have uh, worked uh, in Australia. Uh, they are also able to provide you with information, but if you have any direct uh, questions to Seagate, do drop an inquiry through seagate.com. We'll do, and we'll put some uh, links into the show notes as well, particularly the Skyhawk Health Management. There's a nice simple little video there that explains the health management system and the stages that it goes, that it goes through and, and involves. So I think that's uh, a real differentiator for Seagate and the Skyhawk uh, systems is that uh, health management system, which hard drives, often you have to rely on your checking and your own uh, audit logs uh, to make sure that they're actually working. So look, thank you so much, Jeff Park, the Australian Country Manager for Seagate. Pleasure having you on our My Security TV, Tech and Sec Weekly. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Jeff. Pleasure.